Some of y'all missed, huh? <laughs> but don't worry, you're going to get your chance. I'm going to come back and get you. Um, Bible study is one of the greatest parts of any ministry or church. And a lot of times when people are in churches, they kind of miss the rule and thumb why they go to church. Some people are in it religiously. First of all, we need to know that we know that we know what the Lord is saying. And sometimes people say, I know the Lord. I tell people, I beg the difference with you. You know of him, but to know him is to love him. And to be found out that you are obedient to him and to do what he called you to do. So I run into people all the time that tell me they know the Lord. And I, I always look at them and say, okay, yeah, you know of him. Because many would come before me in that day and say, Lord, Lord. And they find out they really didn't know him. To know him is to love him. To know him is to obey him. To know him is to trust him. To know him is to be found in right standing with him. Amen? Now, I, sometimes people say, no, I don't want that part of the Lord. I just want to know him religiously. I want to scream. I want to shout. I want to run. I want to do all that thing. But you need to know the word for yourself. Amen? Not for other people. I, I'm going to go through something tonight. I, I don't, I'm just dealing with something on the radio, and I'm going to be dealing with it all week out of the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 8. But I'm going here to another part because, remember, we're leaving. Uh, the United States is really crossing over into what we call gay nation. And people are wondering what in the world is wrong with this country. I love my country, I do, but I have to pray hard for my country, very hard. I, I'm stricken and sickened by some of the things that's going on in the country that should not be happening, and Jesus is soon to return. I mean, he's coming back sooner than what you can ever imagine. Y'all get what I'm saying? So if he's coming, what are you going to do? You got to sit the house in order, right? All right, now go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. I want to see what you guys get out of this. Who is this guy on the news that have transformed himself into a woman? Bruce who? Okay, tell me. Now, y'all say, you judging. You judging. Right? That's what they say, right? Go to Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. And when you get it, say amen. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. You got a daughter? Read. The woman shall not wear that which is pertaining unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garments. For all that do so are what? An abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, I often say sin is sin, but some sin God calls an abomination. Now, how deep is that? Can anybody tell me what that means there? You're going against God's word. Anybody else? That's the way he made you. Right, right. Okay, for me to put on a garment like uh, Tanya got on right there, and y'all see me sitting up here, y'all say, now he done lost his mind. <laughs> huh? You ain't gonna get me delivered? Church folk could just leave you like that. You supposed to cast the devil out, ain't you? Oh, well, okay, you're gonna leave the church. You're just gonna leave me right there like I'm, I'm gone. Okay, all right, come on. I'm just giving a point. I can't wear no woman's garments. Huh? You didn't get it. Here it is. Okay. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on that, put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Yeah. 
A woman should not wear man's clothes if anything that's pertaining to a man. A woman, in other words, she's supposed to dress as a woman. Well, what about Bruce? He then went and had steroids shot up in his breast and made him some women's boobs. And it's what now? It is abomination, as it says. So, is an abomination worse than sin? Sin is Oh, y'all got to have. Okay, what does Proverbs chapter 6 say when it said these six things does the Lord hate? Yea, seven are what? Abomination unto God. What is it? Y'all ain't even reading it. I gave you this. <laughs> what does Proverbs chapter 6 say? It says, these six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto God. Read it. Six and 70. Okay, it's chapter six. And verse 17. Okay, read. A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises what? Wicked plans. You got a living Bible. Wicked imaginations read feet that are swift to running to evil uh-huh a false witness that speak lies and one that sows discord among who I got a boy in jail it's done over seven six years already because a lady decided to lie on him and she put him in a place that he was not supposed to be right now she's what they call a false witness all right she caught cancer and she went back to the courts and say i lied on that man five years later but he's been in jail all this time because she lied and they still say too bad we ain't gonna let him go So he's still in jail. Now, what do you say to that? Now, you wrong. I said, you wrong. I said, I told you, she, remember, hear what I'm saying, not him. I said, she turned around and lied on this young man. He was 21. He's 27 or 8 now. And she told the courts he was at a certain place at a certain time, blew his probation, and put him. I see you, son. Thank you. I wish to God I had somebody for that ministry. Y'all don't understand, do you? I, I said, I wish to God I had somebody for that ministry. Y'all don't understand. Everybody ain't going to serve God. They can have the gift and they ain't going to do it. I've expressed this how many times, Will? Many times, haven't I? I often wonder why God put us right next door to a deaf home. Huh? That man right there speaks to me. I like him. He can, he can almost read my lips. That's how he sits here. She reads Braille. See, God will test you in the little things. And people don't realize some ministries are far more greater than others. 
All right, let me go back to the point of abomination. Now, what is an abomination? Somebody explain that. What is it? It contaminates the blood. Okay, stop. What's an abomination? Look it up, somebody. Tell me what's abomination. I need to know what is abomination. Because see, when God says what we're reading in Proverbs chapter 6, and verse 17, you started it, right? He said, and yea, and seven are an abomination. You hear what he said? Now, I'm asking, what is an abomination? I know sin is sin. We got that down pat. What you got, son? The thing that causes disgust or hatred. Evil and rage, crying and what? Machacity and man. Atrocities, okay. Are we doing that now? Okay, well, well, first of all, man ain't supposed to put on nothing pertaining to a woman. So uh, Bruce, what they call him, Bruce Jenner? Is he committing an abomination? Okay, am I judging him? Who's judging him? Did you read it? So God says he's committed what? He's committed an abomination. The president have committed what? Something else the president is doing. I looked on the news here recently. He is giving uh, weapons to the Arab nation to attack Israel. Huh? Do that scare any of you? Do that put the fear of God in you? Why? Well, have he not turned the wrath of God on this country? Are we the gay nation? That's what they call us. Now, when I begin to explain that to people, no preacher's preaching it. He's preaching prosperity. He's preaching wealth, health, and happiness. He's preaching everything, but nobody's preaching the coming of the Lord. Nobody sees. Not, I, I mean, there are preachers that's doing it. But if you hear me talk about it, it's because God is saying, whoa. Why is he saying, whoa? Okay, what scripture did I give y'all in my sermon Sunday? It's in the Old Testament. This, this, this um, chapter only has three chapters in it. Nahum what? What verse? It's five. Open and read it. Then go to the book of Revelations, chapter 14, and look at verse 8. Who want to get revelations? I said 14 and 8. Who's going to get Nahum chapter 3 and verse 5? You got it? Stand up and read. It says, Behold, I am against thee, said the Lord of hosts, that I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. And I will show the nations thy nakedness, 
and the kingdoms by shame. Now, why is God saying this? Because of the abominations. God is angry with the wicked what? That's wickedness. If anybody don't quite understand why this wickedness is being put on display, they took uh, homosexuality to a whole different level. You know what they call it? They call it what? Transgender. What in the world is that? They made the word up to try to get it passed in the court system. Yeah, he had it done. The only thing he didn't have done was the other part. And he says he still likes women. Don't you know that's confusion? Oh, um... What do I have to ask the Holy Spirit? What do I have to ask the Holy Spirit? What, am I, what do I have to ask the Holy Spirit? That's confusion. Number one about sin, sin is confusion. We got to be so against it. Because if we don't fall out with sin, we're going to join up with it. People say, oh, the, the president couldn't be like that. How can two walk together unless they first agree? I don't have to say it. I already know it. He liked that. So when I tell you how the word of God is going to go, it judges you. That's a two-edged sword. It judges me. Don't you have a conscience when you know you did something wrong? If you steal, you know you did something wrong. I don't have to go ask God. God said, now you know you're wrong. I said, okay, God. You know when you messed up? You know when you broke the speed limit and the police pulled you over and said, oh, God, you look down the speed limit, you're doing 80 in a 35 mile an hour zone. Now, what I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, what did I do wrong? I already know I did wrong. And I turn around and I break it. You've got to understand we're living in the last days. These are perilous times, and the times are not going to change. The preacher's going to preach some wonderful message. I see the preacher, he can preach to, preach to you till you can give every sock you got out of the dime. Or you'll give to the eagle, come off the dollar. He's gifted with taking them offerings. Amen? I'm gifted with letting you know you coming too close to turn back now. We're in the end time. And the enemy is challenging us. He wants us to think that maybe I can just slide this over on them. Okay, when they first started putting the mark of the beast out, they put it in animals. They put it in cats, they put it in dogs, they put it in animals. I've seen people die and leave an animal $25 million. The lawyer was very happy because when the person died, he can write for the animal another will. Does that make any sense? When I leave a dog $25 million, that dog gonna be the most deadest dog you ever wanna see on the face of the earth, I'm gonna kill it. Take him around the corner and throw him out in front of a car. Something <laughs> I'm writing the dog a will. Ain't that right, Will? <laughs> will didn't even agree with me. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go back. So we already see where the abomination is at, right? I showed you the other part of the abomination, the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter 6, verse, that was 17, right? Okay, yea, seven are what? An abomination. It's a lot of confusion in sin. And sin don't do nothing but go deeper. Um, beastology, dealing with man, with man, woman, with woman. 
we already know it's not of God. When he got a telephone call from the president, oh, I'm so proud of you for coming out. I said, oh, MG. Buddy, do you know what you just did? Here you are, the captain of the host of the guard. You open the door to the floodgates, and here comes the enemy. Let's bind him up now. Let's bind him up. I want to show you something. Somebody say obedience is better than sacrifice. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. And I'm just being frankly honest with many of you. I'm just trying to show you how the wealth is in happiness. The wealth is in obeying God, right? I'm going to show you something in 1 Samuel about Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. Let's begin reading there. Anybody got it? Anybody got it? Read. Over Israel. Now therefore hearken unto, he said, hearken unto the voice of the, of the words of the Lord. Read. You got a mic. Mm -hmm. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. And he said what? Oh, spare them not. And spare them not. Now note the wording that God gave. He said, go and smite them. Go ahead, son. Stop rubbing that mic. There you go. Read. But slay both men and women, infant and suckling ox and sheep camel and donkey and ants now now <laughs> that's all the time that kind of got next to him when he read that he didn't think that was in the bible come on now give him a chance he's young he, he, he didn't even know that was in the bible but it is in the bible now first of all i want you to kill the children too Absolutely. everything that suck on the breast he said i want you to kill everything now, God was mad with Amalek because Amalek was a heathenistic nation. And when I, you talk about a heathenistic nation, they really, had, they really got in trouble with God. Amen? Y'all got that? Now we're going to read verse, uh, verse that four, verse four, verse, verse, verse four. Read. And Saul gathered the people together. And Saul gathered the people together. And them the Italian. 200,000 footmen. 200,000 footmen. And 10,000 men of Judah. Okay, read. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay wait in the valley. Read. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go depart, let you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Now, 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 wait, now, hold it. God was after who? God was after who? That's who he was after. Because, but he let these go. Y'all see that? Because they did what? Because they showed kindness. Read. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilon until thou comest to sure that it is over against Egypt. He killed everything. He started killing them, right? Read. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But he took the king, Agag. Now God told him to kill Agag. Everything, right? Mm. Read verse 9. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and of the lamb and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them but everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. Now wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Mm. He started taking of the goodly sheep, the goodly cattle. Mm. But what did God tell him to do in the beginning? Destroy everything. 
Destroy everything. Don't bring nothing back. But a little lust got in his eyes. And he started bringing that stuff back to him. Read 10. Then came, came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is what? Turn back from what? Follow me and have not what? He have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord all night. Because he had turned around and started doing something that was not pleasing to God. And when Saul rose early to meet Saul, Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning it was told Samuel saying Saul come to Carmel to Carmel and behold he set him he up set him up a place, place and is gone, gone about, about and passed, and passed on, on and, and gone down, gone to, Gilgal. down to Gilgal and Samuel, Samuel came to Saul. Came to Saul. And, and Saul said unto and him. And Saul said unto him, Behold. Blessed be thou. Blessed be thou of the, the Lord. Lord. I have yeah. performed the commandments, commandments of, the, of Lord. the Lord. I done done what God told me to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Now wait a minute. Did he really? No. Disobey. <laughs> Read verse 14. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Stop. He said, What is this? Hmm. What is this? He brought back the best of the ox, the sheep, the cattle, mm -hmm. and the king. And a guy. And the king. Read verse 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. Then Samuel said, when thou wast little in thine own sight. Stop right there. Isn't it amazing when you ain't got nothing, how humble you could be? Yes. Yes. It's wonderful when people don't have a dime. Hmm. They can be real humble. Yeah. But when they get some money. Mm. It's a brother from another mother coming mm -mm. to you. Because they didn't have nothing. They were little in their own eyes. Read. Was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? Uh-huh. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? Uh-huh. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did a fly upon the spoil, and did a evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of the Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took up the spoil, the sheep and the oxen. Isn't it funny how people blame other people when they get in trouble? <laughs> it's good to get the blame off of you. But they turned around and started blaming. He started blaming, but the people. Now he the king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Open rebuke is what? Better. People can't take me. I'm a strong cup of coffee. I drink it black. Mm -hmm. All right. 
I mean, if you come on now. When God began to deal his will, he chastened them in love. Now wait, I'm going to prove out something. What does Romans chapter 13 say? Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. Romans 13. Romans 13. Romans 13. Now, when I just rebuked her a moment ago, right? I rebuked her a moment ago, right? Yes. I'm going to show you my authority. I carry a large sword. My sword is so sharp that it'll cut you so fast you won't even know you've been ripped open. And you'll start bleeding before you know you've been bled. Because it's the words that come out of my mouth. I'm not anointed on my own. He anointed me. My words don't hardly hit the ground. They will make up for what God is speaking. It's not good to make a covenant with me and don't keep it. Brother, you my partner. No, I'm not. Because you ain't signed no contract. And if I'm your partner, then you're going to have to come on and give me some money. See, people don't realize you don't want to be my partner. Unless God told you to be my partner. But don't lie to me. Once you lie to me, you're in bigger trouble. Because you're not lying to me. You're lying to the spirit of God that's in me. I'm nobody, but it's him that's doing the work. What does Romans 13, 1 say? Let every soul be subject unto the and higher to power. Read. For there is no power but of God. Read. The powers that be are ordained they are of God. They are ordained of God. Read. Whosoever therefore resists the power, uh -huh. resists the ordinance of God. They resist who? God. They're resisting God. And the ordinance, the laws that God has laid down. Once you resist them laws, other laws don't make no difference. You just broke the laws of the kingdom. Read. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Stop right there. The judgment doesn't come already. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Had a man come to my table and was eating breakfast. I had the same authority. I said, no, you don't. It comes by ranks. You don't know how much hell I've been through. Mm. And you ain't started going there yet. Some of the sufferings that we go through are far more greater than a lot of people could ever imagine. And it's good that I was afflicted. But I didn't make it on my own. I could have died. But God saw fit to keep me alive. The pressures that be that are of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the things that's going to happen in the near future. Can't do it. So now, the first authority in Romans 13 is police officers. It's written right there. It's police. The next authority, the main ones, are the priests. What happened to Ananias and Sapphira? When they lied to the Holy Ghost. Fell dead. They Fell dropped dead, dead like that. Fell they walked dead. up in the room and said, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. They fell out. Now they could have went to jail. You killed Ananias and Sapphira. No, he didn't. They made a vow to God that they were going to take this no good piece of land that they thought was worthless and that they were going to take that land and they were going to give it to the apostles. They went and got that land appraised after they sold it. It was worth way more than what they could ever imagine. And they turned around and said, we're going to keep half of this. And when they went before the apostles, the man died. Then here come the woman. Then she died. Ananias died, then Sapphira's wife. But why did they die? They lied. God said, a liar won't even tarry in my sight. People will lie in a minute. 
The Lord showed me, God said, I don't show you wickedness. I show you who I am as being God. But when people get on the wrong side of God now, don't make him mad. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Now here come the wrath. Is this interesting? The fear of the Lord is what? Beginning what? But fools despise what? Instruction and they hate what? They hate knowledge. When people don't want to do the right thing, they get angry. And they get angry with you especially because you're doing the right thing. It don't take all of that. It's a time and a place for everything. And you talk about church. Why do you talk about church so much? Because they ain't going to church. They did it on your job, don't they? I don't want to serve God today. Then they come back to you. I'm getting a divorce. I don't know why my wife leaving me. That happened to me in General Motors. A man just bawled me out on the job, two and three, and laughed in my face. About two weeks later, they walked back to me and said, my wife is leaving me. Crying like a baby. Will you pray with me? Huh? But why did they come back to me? When two weeks before, they were laughing in my face, called me a big joke. Why don't you go to church with all that praying, praise the Lord and hoogla? Now pray for me. In the dirty factory. But the whole key that I'm making is God broke him down. Not to say I told you so, but it was for me to be humble enough to go and pray with him to help them through. You know that man got saved? He lost his wife, but he got saved. I mean, God is good, but look at some of the stuff people got to go through. God, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all come to one place. That's repentance. All right, who got Revelations um, chapter 14? And what is that? Verse 8? Verse 8. You got a will? Okay, you got it, sis? I'm coming. Trying to... Revelations. 14 and 8. Uh-huh. Yes, I have it. Read. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is falling, is falling, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Stop right there. Who is doing that right now? United States of, of America. America. We, are, we have fought with every country, tore it up. Now it's coming out like I always knew. ISIS is the United States. I always knew ISIS was the United States. They were cutting folk head off over there so they could start a war. Oh, why well, you think they were covered up in sheets talking like Americans? This is a wicked country because of the greed that's at the top. Obama is a puppet to the Antichrist. But the United States is the perfect one third. If you read the rest of it, read it. I'm gonna show you something, read. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended. Now listen, listen to this. Now the smoke of her torment, what? Ascended up 
forever and ever. Keep reading. And they have no rest day or night uh -huh. who worship the beast and his image uh -huh. and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Uh -huh. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their work. Do follow them. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one set like the son of man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that set on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe stop now, over in, I think, Malachi, or the book before, it talked about the sickle being thrown into the earth. I want y'all to catch on to this. When Babylon had fallen, her merchants stood afar off and said, Babylon, Babylon, that great city Babylon, for in one hour, she was destroyed. Okay? What caused this to happen? Now, let me share something with you as being the saints of God. He has not appointed us to wrath. So you've heard of the great catching away. Some called it the rapture, which is not written in the book, but the great catching away is. Right? Immediately... A trump is going to sound. And the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him where? In the air. Now the people that's left here are antichrist. I fear for some. Anybody that thinks that they're going to heaven with animosity, bitterness, malignity, fornication, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, tradition, strife, heresies, not going. Not going. The heart must be sold out to be pure. So we cannot go into heaven with anything that's not like God. Why do you think the world is so confused and so condemned? Because the devil is sowing his seed in the fields, in the hearts of men and women. And many of them are trying to make excuses the reason why they do the things they do. Watching television is feeding the eye gate. Eye gate is feeding the, the psyche. In the midst of the psyche, you begin, to, you begin to see and hear things. You begin to, where did that come from? You begin to dream things that you never thought you would dream. The enemy is sowing his seed in the fields of the minds of the people. So people are beginning to go on the side of those that are homosexuals. Everybody's doing it. Does that make it right? I got to minister tonight on the radio uh, how um, they wouldn't eat the king's food. Okay? Okay. Some of the food that we have, and I think, I think all y'all can agree with this, um, we have more poison in our food than any countries almost in the world. High fructose corn syrup was ushered in back in the 60s uh, when they thought that, you know how, what they call a cane, cane sugar. Y'all remember that? Now some of y'all can't remember because some of y'all were too young. But the sugar cane, you remember that? That's where the sugar originally came from. I, I got some over in the house, but I, I put in my coffee and I got it over here. It's called cane, it's, it's the real sugar. But 
they start putting high fructose corn syrup into that. And that's, now they're saying, you know, we want to cure cancer. How are you going to cure cancer and you're giving people cancer? I can't figure that out. You're going to give me cancer and we're going to have a march for cancer. Isn't that kind of confusing? You cannot cure cancer unless you get rid of cancer. So now they shoot cancer in you. When they do that, when you got the flu shot. The flu shot, he was a Catholic. The flu shot was cancer. Y'all know that, right? Anybody ever take a flu shot and get sick? Huh? Yeah. It ever made you sick? Huh? A rash. Okay, how many of y'all know they got a bad batch? You ever heard of that? And people die from a bad batch. Now, here we are in church wondering, where is the world going? Where are we going? Do we have to accept everything they put out here? So if they come in here right now and say, I want to put the mark of the beast right up under your, your right hand or put it in your forehead, would you take it? Why would you take it? They're giving it to the ducks. They're giving it to the cows. They're giving it to the dogs. They're giving it to the frogs. They're giving it to everything. Why don't you take it? Now y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Now babies being born into the world, they're trying to slip it into babies in different countries. Now they're trying to, not only that, they're giving it to prisoners. I heard a new thing just started taking place, and somebody can look this up if you can help me. If a person have AIDS... Guess what they do now? They put a tattoo on them. They put it right across their stomach. I am HIV. What's going on with this world? Huh? They're starting to identify, right? All right, I'm going to stop here. Any questions? That's why they're giving away free phones. All right, that's, is that true? Is that true? I, I think, y'all know what? I think that's almost like a census. Uh, remember how they used to, could tell how many people were in a city? Okay, they're collecting data. Now think about this. They're collecting data from your cell phone, even though you with Verizon or Sprint, or you got T-Mobile, or you got what? Metro. Metro PC, and what else? You got in your TV, in your TV too, okay. Huh? Cricket. Cricket. What else? It used to be we could identify it on our food. Now we can identify it in the things we do. It's, also in, it's in Facebook. And your desktop. Your laptop. Laptop. And your desktop. desktop. What else? It's in your email. It's in your car. All cars in your car. Okay, I just found out about your car. They got the Wi-Fi sitting on the little thing. A tracking device. You know, if they want to repossess that car now, all they do is download the code, and they can come and get the car? They know what a car is? It's a satellite-driven. It's satellite-driven. How many of y'all seen the new Mercedes that, that was at the auto show? Did y'all see that car that could drive itself? In other words, you could get in the front seat, program where you want to go, turn around and face the people in the back, and the car take you. That would take some getting used to. The car driving me. I said, look, I don't think I can take this too much longer. Somebody better take control, because I don't know how long we're going to make it here. It's a glitch. It's a glitch in everything. You know what I mean? Okay. They even have it in your bank, your bank card now. They have a chip. And a, right now, you know, if you have Wait money in the bank, the World Bank system, they can shut us down in a, in, in a nanosecond 
and there won't be no movement of money, no nothing, and we'll just be without it. So, you know. In a nanosecond. In a nanosecond. In less, in less than, I mean, right now, they can cut off all the lights, all everything, and, and, and we'll, we'll be without it. We'll, I, I know I won't be without Christ because I'm going to be calling on the Lord. But the thing of it is, is that everything that we're doing now is going into that system that you're speaking about. Okay. Well, why do doctors put you on pills and say you're going to be on this the rest of your life? <laughs> Make and so if you really get sick and can't get to the medication, guess what? The rest of your life is over. Yes. Um, it was a movie made. I never could think of the name of this movie. I think some of y'all saw it. Where right up under the guy's skin, they had to work. And when they got paid, their time went under their skin. So when they, uh, the, he was running to get to his mother it's called time something. And they could touch each other and share each other's time. So he went to work and he tried to get to his mother's mother's running to him, running, and bam, she died. And there would be a truck that go around like a trash can and pick up bodies. Now, is that a true statement? That's right now. So what can we do, y'all? I'm asking y'all, what can be done? Huh? What? What can we do on this side? Win souls. Add more, add more diamonds to our crown, right? Okay, anybody else? People. Okay. On this side, what would y'all say? Get ready to stop. A lot of you, I don't know why I had to go here tonight, but I think I do. People are not ready. Our families are not ready. The young people are not ready. They getting them through music. No, that they're getting them through that jump. And a lot of them don't know that the enemy is trying to slight them. It's time to be saved. Amen? Amen. Would y'all agree with that? Amen. I'm afraid for the, for the country, the United States. I'm afraid for people that we know and our family members that they think it's a joke that we go to church, that we serve God. I'm afraid for them. They won't know it until after we're gone and God then raised us out of here. They're going to run to the church and say, where is the saints? And we're going to be gone. Amen. Bow your heads. Father God, right now, I'm asking you to Reveal yourself to your people. Because God, never before have I felt like this in my spirit. I see you coming. And too many people are not looking for you there. They're thinking that maybe something is wrong with us. When something is wrong with the whole world. Too many people are having difficulties in receiving what we're saying about the promise. Bless us as we go, Father, and we begin to share with others the kingdom of God. Make them afraid and know and give us the anointing, because I shared with the church, there's no power in the church. The power's gone out because we're following religiosity. The power's gone out because we're doing what we want to do and not what God called us to do.
The power's gone out because we're not finding our way into the kingdom. We're finding our way into titles and different things that people placed on us. God, I want to be saved. I want this church saved. I want my enemies saved. I want everybody to know you, Jesus. Have mercy, oh God. Touch our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirit. And we thank you, Father, for doing it now by the might of your mercy and the grace. We pray it now in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. God bless everybody.